Today, inshallah, we wish to complete the chapter of the people who are allowed to pray their salah in a shortened manner, and this is due to their traveling and the chapter of salah of fear. Which basically means that Salatul Khawf is a prayer that which is prayed due to fear. It's the same prayer, but the, in the manner in which it is prayed in, we are told within the Sunnah to differ within that. And the only reason Salatul Khawf is permitted, it's due to a war or a killing or the fear of the enemy entering into the lands in which the people reside in. So for example, if we had an area in which people reside in and they had an army and this army is appointed to protect the people and the lands then they fear the fact that there are armies that are coming from outside to attack these lands. In that case, Salah is, is not excused for an individual. Meaning Salah is still compulsory and it still has to be prayed upon time. Even in duration of a war. But if a person is within inside his own lands, then he is not permitted to shorten the prayer. But if he has left his land to travel outside with an army, then it's permitted for them to shorten their prayers. And this is with regards to the evidence taken from the Qur'an. And if you were amongst them and leading them in salah, then let a group of people stand with you and let them take their arms with them, meaning their weapons with them, and then when you go down into prostration, then let those who are behind you stand, and then they complete with you in prayer. So basically, there are two conditions with regards to Salatul Khawf, and the first is the fact that, that the Muslims are out in journey to take those who are oppressed out of their oppression and into the freedom of that which Islam allows them to. Hence, there's an army going out. For them, it is permissible to pray Salat al-Khawf. And if there are Muslims within inside the lands and they fear that others would come from outside and take these lands, for example, or they will attack and whatever not, they are also permitted to pray Salat al-Khawf. But how is this Salat prayed? It's just like saying we're going to pray Fajr, we're going to pray Dhuhr, we're going to pray Asr, we're going to pray Maghrib. It's just like a normal Salah. But the only difference is the fact that the person, and there are different ways, up to five different ways that have been mentioned within the scholarly opinion as to how this Salah should be prayed. But one of the ways and the common ways is the fact that the Imam will stand at the front and he knows the fact that they are in armies and they're situated in armies and he will stand at the front and they will make two rows so they will be first row and row and second row of prayers or people who will be praying behind the imam when the imam will for example recite surah al-fatiha and recite a small surah when he will go into the rukur into the uh, position of bowing then those who will be standing behind him in the second row will keep standing. They will keep standing with their arms. And then they will go down, the first row will go down and do their sajda, and then do their second sajda, and then they will come up for the second. So in this case, what it means is the fact that they, the ones behind, they will be behind the imam by one rakah. 
they will always be behind the Imam by one rak'ah. So they will first follow, so the first row will follow with the Imam, and then the second row, and then the second rak'ah, second unit of the prayer, the first ones will stand and the second one will follow. So you've always got one row that's always standing as guard. And eventually when the Imam does do salam, the last standing row will complete their one unit of prayer. So basically this is just a salah that has been appointed for those who are within the armies, who are guarding the border lines and so forth. That they know the fact that there's an enemy coming from far and they're waiting for them and they're on standby. So one will stand and the second one will be praying. And then the first one will be praying and the second one will be standing with their arms. And just like that they will be on watch while they're praying. So even in this case we understand from the ahadith that the importance of salah to the extent that Allah Azza wa Jal did not excuse the prayer even in duration of war. So even in duration of war, one has to pray, even although the manner in which it is prayed in slightly differs, but it still has to be prayed. And like I said, there are different methods and different ways in which it's been mentioned that this salah can be prayed. Others said that the Imam goes into rakur, and the, all, the, both rows go into rakur, and after the rakur, uh, then they stand and keep standing and don't go into sajda. Just like that, they slightly differ. But the point being, the fact that there is a salah by the name of Salat al-Khawf. And this Salat al-Khawf is prayed under two conditions. If the Muslims are out saving others, or the Muslims are in defense, defending their lands. And these armies will pray knowing the fact that there is people upon them trying to distort their lands and whatever not. So this is Salat al-Khawf in brief. And inshallah we wish to continue with a new chapter and that is the rulings of Salatul Jum'ah. So inshallah we will start with that tomorrow. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.